just invited us to dinner. One teacher can have an everlasting impact on a child's life. Think back to your days in school. Unfortunately, teachers must follow a curriculum, which means they can't talk about everything. Join us as we look at some things that are forbidden to talk about in schools. You are such a country bumpkin, Sextus. This is Rome. We have communal toilets. We all go together. 20. The Forbidden Forks While other courts on the continent had been using forks for years, the English were hesitant to adopt this dining improvement. It wasn't until the 18th century that fashionable English forks got an extra tine or two and an elegant curve to assist them to handle food. Still, the two-tine type was used throughout the Victorian era in rural areas of England and among individuals who saw no need in throwing away perfectly good silverware. However, this was not an easy modification to achieve. When Englishmen first saw forks, they were suspicious of them and made fun of them. Many people in the Middle Ages believed the three-pronged utensil was reminiscent of the devil's pitchfork and hence an impure and ungodly device. The fork did not fully take off, at least among the aristocracy, until the 18th century in France, with various other civilizations following suit, if only for looks. 19. Bengal Famine of 1943 The Bengal Famine of 1943 was caused by humans in British India's Bengal province. An estimated 800,000 to 3.8 million people died in the Bengal region from starvation, malaria, and other diseases exacerbated by malnutrition, population dislocation, filthy circumstances, and a lack of health treatment. Millions were impoverished as the crisis wreaked havoc on major areas of the economy and shattered society. Families eventually fragmented. Men abandoned their tiny farms and left home to look for jobs or join the British Indian Army, while women and children became homeless migrants, frequently traveling to Calcutta or other major cities in quest of organized aid. Our thumbnail is gruesome, as we can see many dead bodies hanging from a long cable which is attached to two cliffs. Who are these people? Is this what detention looks like in certain countries? If anyone knows, don't hesitate to let us know in the comments. 18. Cowboy Hat The cowboy hat is a prominent symbol of American culture, symbolizing the cultures of the American South, West, and Southwest. The sight of the hat conjures up memories of farming, ranching, and forging one's own path in a new frontier. The cowboy hat is an icon that embodies the American spirit. The earliest cowboy hat appeared in the 1860s, although we can trace its origins back to the 13th century. Mongolian horseback riders are recorded, wearing hats with a lofty crown and wide brim to keep their heads warm and their faces and necks protected from the sun. When European pioneers began coming into the American West in the 1800s, there was no standard hat. They wore a variety of headwear, including top hats, bonnets, sailor caps, improvised coonskin caps, and many others. Enter the cowboy hat, which we all know and love. As previously stated, the sombrero worn by Mexican vaqueros is said to have inspired American pioneers to construct the cowboy hat. John Batterson Stetson is credited with inventing the first American cowboy hat, and he has a fascinating background. In 1865, John B. Stetson created a new hat style dubbed Boss of the Plains. He made it to be tough, waterproof, lightweight, and fashionable. The earliest hats were constructed of fur felt and included a sweatband to distinguish between the front and back, lining, and a chin strap. They were generally painted in simple gray, black, brown, or white. When most people think of a cowboy hat, they don't envision the Stetson. The brim and top were both circular and flat. As the Stetson gained popularity, changes and alterations transformed it into the modern cowboy hat. 17. James Jameson's Fascination with Cannibalism James Jameson, the heir to the Jameson Irish Whiskey Company, once paid six handkerchiefs for a 10-year-old slave girl to draw the incident in which cannibals slaughtered, maimed, and eventually ate her. Apparently, Jameson was fascinated with cannibalism and wanted to experience it himself. In 1890, while traveling in Africa, Jameson and his translator came across a cannibalistic tribe, which gave him an opportunity to fulfill his morbid desire. Jameson approached the tribe's chiefs, who informed him that if he wanted to watch the ceremony, he needed to buy a slave girl to be slaughtered. Jameson returned a few minutes later with a 10-year-old girl he had purchased from a nearby slave trader for six handkerchiefs. The interpreter then approached the chiefs and told them the girl was a gift from a white man who wanted to see her eaten. According to an eyewitness account of the incident, the cannibals tied the girl to a tree and stabbed her twice in the stomach. The locals then sliced portions of her flesh while Jameson sat sketching in his notepad. Jameson and his translator proceeded to the chief's hut, where Jameson completed his watercolor sketches.
Napoleon Bonaparte's Height Misconception Napoleon Bonaparte, one of the world's most recognizable cultural icons, is usually depicted with one hand in his waistcoat and short and aggressive. His alleged small stature and fiery temper inspired the term Napoleon Complex, which refers to the widely held belief that short men compensate for their lack of height through domineering behavior and aggression. According to three French sources, his valet, General Gourgaud, and his personal physician, Francesco Antomarchi, Napoleon's height was slightly more than 5 feet 2 inches. Using the French measurements of the time, that equates to around 1.67 meters, or slightly less than 5 feet 6 inches, which is slightly above average for a French man in the early 1800s. So, if Napoleon was of average height, where did the legend of his diminutive stature originate? In fact, it was mostly the work of one man, British cartoonist James Gilray. Gilray's caricatures of Napoleon were so popular and influential that Napoleon said at the end of his life that Gilray did more than all the armies of Europe to bring me down. From the start, Gilray satirized Napoleon as a thunderous, boastful, if not necessarily short, character. In one cartoon, the speech bubble threatens to overwhelm the body of Napoleon. However, in this image, he appears to be more muscular than small. It was a later cartoon that introduced the diminutive image we know today. 15. Genghis Khan Genghis Khan founded and controlled the Mongol Empire from 1206 until his death in 1227, during which time it grew to become the world's biggest contiguous empire. Genghis Khan was one of the most feared and revered commanders of his era. He built a Mongol military strength that was superior to everything else he encountered. After spending most of his life uniting the Mongol tribes, Khan began a series of military expeditions that conquered much of China and Central Asia. He was generous and fiercely loyal to his followers, yet merciless to his foes. He welcomed guidance from a variety of sources in his quest for world dominance, which he felt was predestined for him by the shamanic supreme deity Tengri. The Mongol army under Genghis slaughtered millions of people, but his conquests also allowed for increased trade and cultural contact across an unparalleled geographical range. In Russia and the Muslim world, he is known as a backward, violent despot, but his legacy has recently been reassessed by Western researchers. 14. The History of the English Language English is a West Germanic language descended from Ingvionic languages carried to Britain between the mid-5th and 7th century AD by Anglo-Saxon migrants from what is now Northwest Germany, Southern Denmark, and the Netherlands. The Anglo-Saxons arrived in the British Isles in the mid-5th century and governed much of Southern Great Britain. Their language arose from a group of Ingvionic languages spoken by settlers in England, Southern and Eastern Scotland in the early Middle Ages, replacing the Celtic languages that had previously dominated. Old English reflected the many origins of the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms founded throughout Britain. The late West Saxon dialect gradually gained prominence. Contact with the North Germanic languages spoken by the Scandinavian Vikings, who conquered and colonized parts of Britain in the 8th and 9th centuries, had a considerable impact on the formation of Old English, resulting in much vocabulary borrowing and grammatical reduction. Anglian dialects had a stronger impact on Middle English. Early Modern English, the language employed by William Shakespeare, dates from roughly 1500. It absorbed absorbed numerous Renaissance-era loans from Latin and Ancient Greek, as well as borrowings from other European languages, such as French, German, and Dutch. The Great Vowel Shift, which altered the characteristics of most long vowels, was one of the most significant pronunciation alterations throughout this time period. By the late 17th century, modern English proper, which is comparable to that spoken today, had become established. 13. Real Life of Pirates Have you ever wondered what life was like on a pirate ship? When pirates weren't robbing merchant ships, what did they do at sea? Many pirates arose because of Europe's numerous conflicts when hostilities ended and there was no work for former soldiers or mercenaries. Instead, one of the few available positions was as a member of a pirate ship's crew. But life as a pirate was anything but exciting. The pirates were subjected to poor food, hazardous conditions, and inadequate medical care. If the doctor was hurt, the ship carpenter would be called in to perform any necessary amputations. If the carpenter was also hurt, the cook was summoned. They did, however, have a pension plan in which a tenth of the loot stolen was put into a trust fund in case they were injured in battle. It was a better deal than the Royal Navy or Merchant Marines could offer the sailors. Pirate life may appear to be exciting in the movies, but it was not the reality. 12. The Trail of Tears Between 1830 and 1850, the United States government conducted an ethnic cleansing and forcible removal of roughly 60,000 individuals from the five civilized tribes. Following the passage of the Indian Removal Act in 1830, members of the Cherokee, Muscogee, Seminole, Chickasaw, and Choctaw nations were forcibly relocated from their ancestral homelands in the southeastern United States 
to newly designated Indian Territory west of the Mississippi River. The Cherokee evacuation in 1838 was prompted by the discovery of gold near Dahlonega, Georgia in 1828, which sparked the Georgia Gold Rush. On their way to their newly designated Indian Reserve, the removed peoples faced exposure, sickness, and famine. Thousands of people died of sickness before or shortly after arriving at their destination. Historians have called the episode a genocide, but others have disputed this description, and it remains debatable. 11. Ancient Roman Aqueducts The Romans built aqueducts throughout their republic and later empire to transport water from distant sources into cities and villages. Water from aqueducts was used to provide public baths, latrines, fountains, and private homes, as well as mining, milling, agriculture, and gardening. Rome's earliest aqueduct, completed in 312 BC, delivered water to a fountain in the city's livestock market. By the 3rd century AD, the city had 11 aqueducts, supporting a population of over a million in a water-intensive economy. Most of the water served the city's numerous public baths. Cities and towns throughout the Roman Empire followed suit, funding aqueducts as objects of public interest and municipal pride, an expensive yet necessary luxury to which all could and did aspire. 10. Lady Liberty The Statue of Liberty is a massive, neoclassical sculpture on Liberty Island in New York Harbor, New York City, in the USA. The Copper Monument, a gift from the French people, was conceived by sculptor Frédéric Auguste Bartholdi, while Gustave Eiffel built the metal framework. The statue was erected on October 28, 1886. The statue was conceived in 1865, when French historian and abolitionist Édouard de Laboulaye proposed a monument to honor the forthcoming centennial of American independence, the survival of American democracy, and the freeing of the country's slaves. The Franco-Prussian War stalled development until 1875, when Laboulaye offered that the French people fund the statue while the United States provided the location and built the pedestal. Bartholdi finished the statue's head and torch-bearing arm before it was entirely conceived, and these sections were displayed for publicity at international exhibitions. 9. The Dancing Plague of 1518 Residents of Strasbourg, then part of the Holy Roman Empire, were struck by a sudden and seemingly uncontrollable urge to dance in July 1518, when a woman known as Frau Trophea stepped into the street and began to silently twist, twirl, and shake, the hysteria began. She continued her solo dance-a-thon for nearly a week, and before long, about a dozen other Strasbourgeois had joined in. By August, the dancing epidemic had claimed the lives of up to 400 people. With no other explanation, local physicians blamed the phenomenon on, on hot blood and advised the afflicted to simply gyrate the fever away. A stage was built, and professional dancers were hired. The town even hired a band to provide background music, but the marathon quickly took its toll. Many dancers passed out from exhaustion. Some even died because of strokes and heart attacks. The bizarre episode lasted until September, when the dancers were whisked away to a mountaintop shrine to seek forgiveness. The Strasbourg dancing plague may sound legendary, but it is well documented in 16th century historical records. It's also not the first time this has happened. Similar manias occurred in Switzerland, Germany, and Holland, though few were as large or as lethal as the one that occurred in 1518. 8. Secret History of Mount Rushmore Nearly 3 million people visit the Black Hills of South Dakota each year to see Mount Rushmore, where the carved busts of four American presidents stand six stories tall. The monument's original vision was even grander than it is today. There's no better proof of this than the fact that the monument's equally grandiose artist has begun work on a hidden room within the mountain, intended to inform future civilizations about why the sculptures were placed there. It should come as no surprise that the man who carved massive heads into a mountain was himself larger than life. Gutzon Borglum, the Idaho-born son of a Danish immigrant, had already established a name for himself by the time South Dakota's state historian approached him about carving a mountain in the Black Hills. So, as he began what would become a 14-year, $1 million project, his thoughts turned to how he and the rest of civilization would be remembered when they were gone, rather than how he'd etch four 60-foot faces into a mountain. After all, we know very little about the people who built Stonehenge. Without our assistance, how can future civilizations, or even visiting extraterrestrials, appreciate our legacy? Mount Rushmore construction began in 1927, and Borglum's massive Hall of Records began in 1938. Positioned just behind Abraham Lincoln's hairline, he envisioned this chamber housing all the information anyone would ever need about the mountain and the country, including historical artifacts facts such as the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Visitors would climb an 800-foot rock staircase and look up at a gold-plated eagle 38 feet wide through an 18-foot tall doorway. Unfortunately, the U.S. government did not share his vision and instead demanded that he concentrate on the faces. Borglum died three years after starting work on the room, just a few days shy of his 74th birthday. He never completed the faces, let alone the room. 
7. History of Ancient Roman Plumbing The ancient Roman plumbing system was a legendary feat of civil engineering, bringing fresh water from hundreds of kilometers away to urbanites. Rich Romans had hot and cold running water, as well as a sewage system that removed waste. The waterworks were then upgraded around 2,200 years ago when lead pipes were discovered, allowing the entire system to be dramatically expanded. The city's obsession with lead pipes gave rise to the widely held belief that Rome fell due to lead poisoning. According to a new study, the city's lead plumbing infrastructure was at its largest and most complicated during the centuries preceding the empire's peak. Water gushing through Rome's pipes was said to have picked up lead particles. The Tiber River, whose waters passed through both harbors, received runoff from Rome's plumbing system. However, because the lead particles sank quickly in the calmer harbor waters, experts hypothesized that depositional layers of lead in the soil cores would correspond to a more extensive network of lead pipes. Simply put, more lead in a layer equals more water flowing through lead pipes. Though this lead most likely did not harm marine life, it did leave a distinct imprint. 6. The Amusing Myth About Benjamin Franklin Benjamin Franklin went outside one day in 1752, flew his kite during a thunderstorm, and discovered electricity when it was struck by lightning, right? Well, no. There are a few errors in the sentence. Franklin carried out the experiment while remaining undercover. There was no lightning strike, and he certainly did not invent electricity. He only established the link between lightning and sparks produced by other objects he and his colleagues had been experimenting with, such as Leiden jars. 5. Microwave Kitchen Marvels Percy Spencer, a self-taught engineer working on a radar project for the defense giant Raytheon, accidentally invented the microwave in 1945. He discovered a melted chocolate bar in his pocket while testing a new vacuum tube called a magnetron. He decided to try another experiment, this time by placing some popcorn kernels near the magnetron and watching them pop into fluffy popcorn. Spencer then placed an egg near the magnetron, and the egg began to move as the heat inside the egg created pressure. Spencer noticed that the yolk had become hot after the egg exploded. He realized that the magnetron's low-density energy could quickly cook food. He built a metal box with an opening into which he fed microwave power. The trapped energy created a high-density magnetic field inside the box. He placed food inside the box, and the energy's heat cooked the food. The microwave oven was invented. 4. Wild Bill Hickok The most frequently held view is that poker evolved from the French game poke. When French sailors arrived in New Orleans with their goods in the 1800s, they carried the game with them, and it spread along the Mississippi. By the mid-1800s, a regular 52-card deck had replaced the original 20-card deck that Poke demanded, and the rules had been changed and the name anglicized to poker. The game rose in popularity during the 19th century as the western frontier spread, and it was usual for the game to be played for money. The game spread further during the Civil War and the Great Gold Rush, and the Wild West saw the advent of all kinds of players, cheating, hustling, gambling, and violence became associated with the game. Famous poker players like Doc Holliday, Wild Bill Hickok, and Pat Garrett are inextricably tied with the Wild West saloons. What is now known as the Dead Man's Hand Card Combination got its name from a tale that it was the five-card stud or five-card draw handheld by Wild Bill Hickok when he was shot in the back of the head on August 2, 1876 by Jack McCall. Hickok's final hand allegedly contained aces and eights from both black suits. According to Carl W. Bryan's book, the cards were collected from the floor by a guy named Neil Christie, who subsequently handed them on to his son. The son, in turn, informed Mr. Bryan about the hand's makeup. Christie's son revealed the actual identities of these cards to me. The ace of diamonds with a heel mark on it, the ace of clubs, the two black eights, clubs and spades, and the queen of hearts with a small drop of Hickok's blood on it, despite nothing of the sort was recorded immediately after the shooting. 3. The Great Dane Juliana was a medal-winning Great Dane. She received two Blue Cross medals, the first for extinguishing an incendiary device and the second for alerting her masters to a fire that had started in their shop. In April 1941, two years into World War II, incendiary bombs were dropped across Britain as part of the Blitz. One such device is thought to have fallen through the ceiling of the home where Juliana and her owner lived. The dog is said to have stood over the bomb and urinated on it, putting out the fire and preventing it from spreading. She received her first Blue Cross medal for her actions. 2. Gladiatrix The gladiatrix is the female version of the gladiator in ancient Rome. Female gladiators, like their male counterparts, competed against one another or wild animals to entertain spectators at various games and festivals. There is very little known about them. They appear to have used roughly the same equipment as male gladiators, but were vastly outnumbered and probably certainly considered an exotic oddity by spectators. They appear to have been introduced during the very late Republic and early Roman Empire and were legally outlawed from 200 AD onwards. Their presence is only known from a few tales penned by members of Rome's aristocracy and a handful of inscriptions. 
1. President Zachary Taylor Zachary Taylor was an American military leader who served as the 12th President of the United States from 1849 to his death in 1850. Taylor was a career commander in the United States Army, rising to the rank of Major General and becoming a national hero for his achievements during the Mexican-American War. As a result, he was elected to the White House despite his unclear political ideas. His major aim as president was the preservation of the Union. He died 16 months into his term from a gastrointestinal illness. Most of these were fun to discover, especially the real story of the Statue of Liberty, because frankly, I didn't learn any of this in school. Which one was your favorite? Why don't you let us know in the comments below? Well, that's it for now. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and let us know in the comments what you think. Check out our other videos and subscribe to be part of the fun. Click on the notification icon so you can see our new videos as soon as they're uploaded. Thanks for watching and see you next time.